Good evening. Man, I hope you're grateful for all God has done for you. We're grateful here. Sing along with us. This is the day that you have made. Whatever comes, I won't complain. This is the day that you have made. Whatever comes, I won't complain. For all my hope is in your name. And now your joy always my praise. Give thanks for all you have done. grateful tonight. We are grateful that you're here. We're grateful that we're here. Um, we, have a great, we have a great stream team is what I call it, and uh, wonderful singers and players, and you know that. But we're, this is just a rehearsal if you're not here. So thank you for being here. I hope we've helped prompt you in worship somehow tonight. Hey, let me tell you, we're, we're going to have a quick word of prayer before we get to our devotional. Uh, a couple things. Betty Newberry is in the ER. And so let's pray, pray, pray for Betty. Not sure what that's about. And again, I'm pretty sure the family is not able to be there with her. And so um, that just makes it even worse. So pray for Betty, please. Uh, Cheryl Leonard has a friend in the hospital who is very sick, very sick. And um, I know Cheryl and that family would appreciate your prayers. Ralph Ruby, in case you haven't heard, he was hoping to come home this like this next week uh, before the end of June, before the begin end of May, beginning of June, and that's had to be backed up. He's had some um, some issues come up. They have a, a different date into June for his for his return back here to Arkansas. Uh, but pray, pray for for Ralph, for Paula. Um, just a difficult decision, but you know what? We believe that God has an answer for them. 
has a plan for their lives, and we're believing for that. I have a friend, um, a dear friend, a mentor of mine, and he is he is in the hospital right now in Indiana. And um, again, the same situation. Family can't be there. His is a heart situation, and uh, his name everyone calls him Mac, Brother Mac. So if you would call, pray for my friend, Brother Mac, we would appreciate that so much. Let's have a word of prayer. Jesus, we come to you tonight so grateful for who you are, so grateful for the part in our story that you play because you play the biggest part. Because if it wasn't for you and all you've done for us, we don't know where we'd be. But because of you, we're here and we're celebrating your goodness. Father, you've heard these requests that we're bringing to you tonight. I ask, Lord, that you'd be with Betty. I ask, Lord, that you'd be with this friend of Cheryl's. I ask you'd be with Ralph. I ask you'd be with Brother Mac. Father, there's lots and lots of requests, of course, that we're not mentioning. Be with those in our congregation and our community that are struggling um, financially because of what's going, gone on recently. I pray for those who are dealing with lots and lots of things. Lord, you've promised you'd be a comfort, you'd be a help in times of trouble. And I ask, Lord, that you would do that right now. I pray for Caleb tonight as he comes to bring your word. I ask, Lord, that you would just... Just calm his spirit. Bring him whatever it is that you've laid on his heart. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord. We have to be in your house. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Caleb Mays is coming. Caleb is our NYI president. And um, we are tickled to death again. We've had so many great, great speakers. And let me, let me tell you something I love. You can't see her. But our friend Lori Sherrill is over here. Lori's a mentor. To, to Caleb, and she's here to support him, and I love that so much. Uh, Caleb, it's good to have you. Thank you. Give us what you got. Good evening. I'm Caleb Mays. My parents are Amy Mays and Donald Mays, and my brother is Cameron Mays. For the past couple of weeks, I've been studying the books of James and really focusing on what God wants his children to do, how he wants them to serve him. The two main points of study that I've really been focusing on are faith and deeds. Knowing that faith and deeds go together. Without deeds, faith is dead. Um, James 2.26 says, As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Again, faith has to go along with deeds. As I've been reading James, I've related it to my life and my family's life and really focusing on how I show um, faith and deeds together. And what popped into mind was fostering. And so James shows us in 127 that religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. During the time we've been fostering for about three years now, and... During that time, I've really seen that there are tons and tons of children out there that need love. They need love. They need people to bring them into their homes, to show them love, and to show them not only that they love them, but that God loves them. They need to be shown that He brought them into the world. He has a purpose for them. They come from abuse. They come from broken homes, and they come from abandonment. These are the main things that I've seen as the children we have fostered in our home, we just need to reach out to them and show them love, compassion, and encouragement. There's too many kids going through these horrible conditions. And so many people cannot take them into their home, but there are so many ways that you can help. Um, we have ARC at church, with a, which is one time a month where um, families come and drop their foster kids and biological kids off. They stay here and we feed them, we have fun with them, we play games with them, and it's just a place where they can talk freely, where they are heard, where they can tell their stories and not be afraid that it gets out to other people who don't need to hear that. You can pray for someone who fosters, lift them up, make sure that they know that you're praying for them, that God will guide them and have his hand on their home, their lives, and their instructions um, through fostering. You can help someone who fosters 
so you can babysit for them or team up and babysit for them if the um, family is large because the once a month may not be enough. If we say we believe in Christ, we need to act like Christ. And He served others. He served others and He wants us to serve others like He did. James is saying in relation to this that true faith means you're putting your action with it. Again, faith and deeds. Faith is dead without deeds. James 2, 21 through 22 says, Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. This is a really good example. Abraham took his son Isaac up to the mountain to sacrifice him. He didn't ask questions. He knew God. He had a personal relationship with God, and he believed in God. He knew that his faith in God had to be accompanied by his deeds, his actions. So he took his son Isaac up on the mountain, ready to sacrifice him, prepared the altar, laid him on the altar, was ready, and Jesus sent an angel of the Lord down and said, God knows that you're a faithful servant. You don't have to do this. And he was considered a friend. Another great example is Rahab when she hid the spies. She hid the spies, did not tell um, the people searching for them where they were. She could have gave them out, but she hid them and she had faith in God and she showed her actions by hiding them. James 2, 14 through 17 says, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. We have to put deeds with our faith. We have to show others we can't just sit back and say, well, they need that, they need this. Give them that, give them this. Show deeds with faith. Over and over again, James is saying, faith goes with deeds. Deeds without faith is dead. And this is shown by not just saying we believe, but by putting that into action. So if we believe in Christ and we say we believe in Christ, we need to act like Christ. We need to serve others like he served us. He calls us to serve his children the way he served all of us. James is really good, as I was reading through, he was really good at pointing these out. And as I went on, I just kept coming back to faith and deeds. That stuck out really um, boldly to me about fostering and relating that to that. So as James is saying, faith with deeds... And faith without deeds is dead. So we need to show these children in foster care and these uh, families that have foster children, we need to show them love, compassion, and encouragement. Let's pray. Father God, please, please just hold your hand on us, Lord. May we have the wisdom guidance to show your love, Lord. May we... Know how to serve others like you served us. And may we show love, compassion, encouragement to people all around us that need it, Lord. And it's in your name that we ask this. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Caleb. That was so good. Raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. Sing with us. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I
good that's good Caleb that devotion was wonderful um, I'm not gonna lie to you I sat over there my eyes leaked the whole time because you know fostering is close to our family and actually I count you as a as a downline of my fostering that's what I count I know your mama was doing so many things before we ever came along but I do I do um, we've actually shared a foster kid before um, we, and and I, I love what the Mays do so much. Um, and let me just say, Forest Home Church does a wonderful thing of exactly what Caleb was saying. So many things this church does. Um, I suppose I can say it tomorrow. So there's going to be foster parents in this in this building taking CPR lessons, being very socially socially distanced and everything else. I've taken the class, and they're very good about that. But our building has become a hub for fostering, training, and fostering all kind of stuff. And thank you. Thank you to this church for that. Thank you, Caleb, for that message. Um, so good. So good. Um, I have seen my family grow because of fostering. And I see the Mays family. I don't mean grow in numbers. We do. We have 15 pictures on our wall of kids we've had in our home. But seeing our own kids, our biological kids grow and seeing God working in their lives. Thank you, Caleb, for that message. Hey, let me tell you, this Sunday... We're going to be open. You know that, okay? Tomorrow is your deadline, okay? Tomorrow's your deadline. We need to know if you're coming, how many are coming, okay? We have done math. It takes 72 square feet for a single person to come, okay? For another person to come, it's like 
a total of 90 square feet, which means only like 18 square feet more. And Boyce is watching this, and he's probably yelling at the TV if I'm, if I'm saying this wrong, but I'm close. I know one is 72, two is 90, which means the three would be like 106, 108, something like that. So we need to know how many you have coming, okay? If we have a bunch of families of 10, we can, we can put a whole lot more people in here than we can if we have families of one. But you're all welcome, and we want to know if you're coming, okay? So call tomorrow by, two, by, by, by noon, 2 o'clock. Call tomorrow. Let us know. And so we can so we can be expecting you. You do need to wear a mask, and um, we're going to be socially distanced. We're going to be very careful. We're going to be very very careful. We're going to be right here on Facebook. We're going to be on YouTube, just like it was last Sunday. Hopefully better. Hopefully better. But the same type of a service. What you've been seeing every Sunday, it's still going to be on Facebook and YouTube. Brand new service. Brand new music. Brand new sermon. Same thing that's going on here the same content, it will be there, okay? So if you don't feel like it's time for you to come out, you stay where you are, okay? But if you want to come to church, we'd love to see you as long as you can follow our restrictions. Church starts at 930. Let me tell you, there is no need to come. The doors are going to open no earlier than 9, 10, 10 after 9, okay? I would recommend you come about 9, 20, 9, 25, okay? We're, not, we're, we're discouraging you from from hugging on each other. We're discouraging you from shaking hands. The coffee bar will not be open, okay? There's no children's ministry for you to take your children to, okay? We're even gonna, we're gonna even ask you to use the bathroom before you come and use the bathroom here only in emergency, okay? So there's no need for you to come early, okay? Come on, come on at 9.20, 9.25, that'll be just fine. Some of you that would be early, incidentally. But you come, you come, you don't need to be coming super early. You just come in, 920, 925 will be just fine. Your seat will be assigned, okay? So we hope to see you. We hope to see you. We've had, we've had several, several calling and, and, and confirming, but we also have quite a few who've said, look, I'm, I'm just not ready. And we understand that. Jesus will love you regardless, okay? So if we don't see you there, I hope you'll join us right here on Facebook or YouTube. And... Um, we're looking forward to worshiping with you very soon. Keep praying for our requests. I know our, the people who are experiencing and in the middle of those things, they would appreciate your prayers. Thank you for being here with us. We love you so much. Can't wait to see you very soon. Have a good evening. Thanks for joining us.